of space. So, you know, put a nice one here on the corner. This will be our eye stopper. It kind of comes on up here. Now, if the paint's nice and creamy, now remember in acrylic painting, unlike oil, they evaporate um, when the moisture, you know, just leaves. That's what makes them get stiffer. So you've always got to be adding a little water. The secret to it is to keep your paint at the consistency of very soft butter, just real creamy. And if you can do that, you'll have a lot better luck. So I've noticed that a lot of times as I'm teaching, a lot of you will mix your mixtures here and you just keep working out of them and they get real gooey or real dry and you, f you get real frustrated. But I've noticed just because you're not adding a little water and keeping them creamy. Oh you know, yeah, it's a little bit of a, a housekeeping chore, but you just have to do it. Um, so don't be afraid to keep a little moisture in here. Keep mixing it in and you'll be in good shape. Okay, I want these to be taller on this side, but over here, as we get towards the middle, I'm going to make those a lot shorter. A little taller there. There we go. Because I want to see a little bit of that snow coming through. That's more for depth purposes. Not necessarily a compositional issue as it is, just adds a little. See, it separates the background, even if it's just little bits of snow coming through. See, I just, just enough to bring you forward. You know, there's a method in all this madness, you guys. It's just all there is to it. Now, just about there, there with these. You probably thought we were going to get away without having to use our script brush. Well, we're getting ready to pull it out and put a few trees in here. And it, just because of the lack of time, and it's such a repetitive subject, I may not get all the little dead trees in here, so I'm going to get you started. And then we're going to do a little more detail work on some things. And then if we don't get it completely finished with the trees, that's something you can do on your own without any trouble at all. So all I want you to do now, after you get all your little pine trees in here, or cedar trees, is we're going to get our little script brush out. And I want us to go over here now to this finished piece. And one of the things that makes this painting work so well, frankly, are these dead trees that come up and really help, again, bring things forward. So that's the next thing you want to do is get some of these trees in here. And you don't have to put, like in the middle, say I don't have too many. I have some on the sides. And we'll start with the dark ones first. Now remember, you take your, your number four. This is a number four a script brush. And uh, this is one that I had made um, that most of my students use. And it's made out of sable. Use plenty of moisture. Use the same color we were just using for the uh, pine trees or the cedar trees there, and you get lots of water in here. It's almost like ink. And just roll and roll and roll and roll your brush until your brush comes to a point. And now you come right over here, and we're starting on the right-hand side. Now this is we always have a little problem with this here in the studio, but I'm going to do my best to do this where you can see it. Start from the bottom and come up. Okay, you see there? And then you just start branching off like this. Now you want to do these very quickly, you guys. Now this is your eye stopper on this side of the, of the, of the painting. Now these go on much quicker than you think, if you do it correctly. Notice once again where I'm holding my brush way back in on distance. See, I'm just barely touching the surface of the canvas with this. And see those nice, delicate limbs? Isn't that beautiful? See how that just works in bringing forward the painting? And something about these dead trees or trees that are dormant that are really beautiful. And just don't be afraid. And now we're going. Now, like I said, I'm going to go just a little bit here. And then I'm going to move on with some other things because I want to get the main instructional stuff done today. There's no sense in us spending another whole 30 minutes on just little odds and ends. So you can put these trees all the way across. 
So there's going to be a homework assignment for you. All right, I'll put just a few more here. Okay. So you'll want to continue this right on across. And that'll kind of give this a nice finished look across here. And you'll see that's what I've done over here. Now let me point out something though. In the dark areas, let's go over here to the finished painting. You'll notice in the dark areas, i get them to close in on this here. See, it's sort of a gray. That gray? Well, there's a, a purpose and a reason for this. Now what you'll do is you'll take that same color, add a little white to it, lighten it um, fairly substantially, but not so much that it overwhelms and sticks out like a sore thumb. But see, I've got it nice and about three shades lighter. Now, it doesn't have to actually connect to each tree, but here's the key. Because we're in the darkness, obviously these dark tree limbs don't show up. So if you want some of them to show up, now see, you can go in with some light ones. And you just kind of run into these. They don't have, like I said, have to match, because it's just a whole bunch of trees in here, and they just overlap each other. So you just kind of go through there, and this gives you the contrast so you can see trunks down in at the base. So you're going to be doing two things to finish this up. You get your pine trees in there, your cedar trees, and you put the little dead dark ones, and then you go to the grayer ones in front. And you do the same thing all the way across until you get that completed. So you have the dark ones, then the gray ones, and that's how you bring this on forward. Now the next thing we want to do here, which I think is something that I want all of you to think about, is we need to pop in. This is what we call accent highlighting. See the real bright spots in the painting? I mean, there's some really, and also some little shadows from the snow. See the bluish gray snow in here that you see? That's in the shadow. Well, we're going to do a little of that first. I'm going to keep my eye on our time here. And let's see. There we go. Now I'm going to use my number four flat sable. That's get up here maybe where you can see it a little better against the canvas. Okay, see it's a little flat right there. It's not round, it's just kind of worn off a little bit, but it's kind of, kind of round. Then you're going to mix a little bit of blue and white <clears throat> and a little purple to create sort of a, what we call the, the reflective highlight color or the snow. Kind of do it right here. I know some of you are probably wondering, I had, didn't mention it in the beginning of the show here two or three weeks ago, but um, I have a clean palette, and the reason is because I, this particular palette needed to be a little cleaner for this painting. So I didn't mean to shock anybody when you saw this, but getting dirty now, so that's working good. Now take this bluish purple, and you come in here wherever you might have snow. See, this will be the shadowed side of the snow. It's always going to have this sort of a bluish, grayish purple. And this is how you smush this in, and you create that. Look, see how cool that looks? That is a great thing to remember. Anywhere you can throw in a little bit of this. I mean, it can be anywhere where there's going to be a little snow sort of in the shadowed areas of, the, of your painting. It could be down in through here. It can be just about any place that's in shadow. Up here on this one, of course. I'm just kind of dragging it along, just skimming the surface. It makes it a real dry brush effect, but you have to have that in there. You can put a little up here on the top. I've got some on the top of this mountain here. I just kind of scumble it through here. Adds a nice touch to it. Kind of cleans it up a little bit. Yeah, I like that. Okay, now we get down to the final things. Now let's go back to your number four round sable. Now this is where you can use actually almost pure color. You can take pure orange. 